Okay, hello, my name is Eric Washington, and we're going to do this vlog. What you didn't see before I start this vlog is all the trial and error that I tried to do to get this vlog to work. I bought all this equipment, tried to find a location, tried to run errands, just do all this stuff to try to make this vlog work. Because I haven't vlogged in forever, and it's important to vlog. It's important. And so... Long story short, I hope you can't hear my stomach belly, it would be so embarrassing. Long story short, I've had a lot of trial and error today <laughs> trying to get this vlog to work. So I'm laughing, having a good spirit about it, we're going to do this vlog. And I'm going to tell this story about how I was in a riot in Athens, Greece in the summer of 2011. So, in the summer of 2011, I was about to be a junior. I was going into my junior year of high school and I signed up for this program called People to People. I believe it was started during the Lyndon B. Johnson, maybe Truman, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, it is a public diplomacy program where teenagers primarily, they have family vacations and they have college, collegiate college vacations. And let me not call them vacations, that's not nice. They are ambassadorships. They are ambassadorial travel. You're called an ambassador. And it's public diplomacy because you go overseas, you do community service, you shake hands, you have conversations. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, we're not so different after all. We all have the same problems and we all like the same things. It's bigger than that. There's a reason for it. But at the end of the day, it's more or less just kind of a cool way for students to travel and get to know each other and network and stuff, right? So, in the summer of 2011, I signed up for the Mediterranean package, where you go to Greece, Italy, and Sicily in that order, or Greece, Sicily, and Italy in that order. And so, for those of you who are aware, in the summer of 2011, Greece was going through a financial crisis. And so there were protests in major cities, Athens being one of them. And we knew that going in, it was headline new. And so I remember meeting everyone at the airport. We were all in our little, uh, we were all in our little people to people get up. It's like a maroon polo shirt and we had to wear khakis. Did we wear that that day? Or were we in natural clothes? I think we were in regular clothes, I think, because we were at the airport. Point being, um, and I remember meeting everyone. We were looking at articles. We were reading. And we saw photos of, like, people on fire, people having altercations with the police. Like, it was a whole thing when we were like, what are we about to get ourselves into? And so, fast forward. We get to Athens, Greece. This is the first day. This is the first day of, like, a three-week trip. And our first stop was in Athens. You can't really change the itinerary at this point. So we were like, we're just going to go, we're going to be safe, and we're going to see what happens. So we land in Athens, and we go from the airport to our hotel. And actually, I don't even know if there's an airport in Athens. All I know is we landed in Greece, and we traveled to Athens to our hotel. And actually, when we got there, it was pretty chill. Uh, there wasn't a lot going on. There wasn't any issues. So we get into our, or we check in to our hotel in Athens. And we were like, okay, it's the first day. We got there like in the afternoon. We still had like all the day left, or all the evening, I guess, afternoon and evening. And so we get there, um, and we check into our hotel. We get settled in you know, choose our beds and stuff. And we were like, okay, well, let's go explore Athens. We were we were permitted. We had permission to explore Athens. It was kind of part of the itinerary. And it was one of those things where for anyone who's ever been on like a group vacation where you're with strangers and there's like a chaperone or a tour guide, there's always that point where they're like, oh, do your own thing, split up, spread out, and we'll meet at this location at whatever o'clock, right? So it was that time to do so. And... So we do that, and somehow, some way, um, of course, as teenagers, we're already sort of kind of clicked up in a way. Uh, we don't know each other, so we don't really know if we vibe, but we know like, hey, we're the only people that know each other, and we're overseas, we don't know anyone, so let's stick together. So we're, we're at that point in our teenage summer relationship where people are just kind of gravitating towards people. And so what happens is... Uh, I'm in a very small group of people, and we somehow, some way, found ourselves in the in the town square. Um, and so there's the town square. 
it's in a big circle. I never knew why they call it a town square if it's in a circle, but anyways. So we're in the town square. Uh, it's the circle with like a fountain. And I remember it vividly, it was a big fountain. And at the time, the town square is incredibly empty. It like, it's just empty, there's no one there. And somehow, some way, I remember it, catty corner to the fountain is like this long strip, I don't wanna call it an alleyway, but long strip of like skinny, narrow road where it's all markets. And it's all just like souvenir markets, um, supply markets, just like little knickknacks, not like food or drinks, but like little items. And this is important. They all had these garage like doors. Um, they didn't have like a you like a door where you go in and there's like a little bell or anything like that. It's all garage doors. So these markets are open all the way. So there's no door. It's just like a like a storage room uh, that turned into a market. And so I remember going in and we're just doing a little bit of shopping. Like this part of the story isn't important. We're just doing some shopping, doing some window. Some people are doing window shopping because they're like, I don't want to spend money yet. Some people are doing shopping because it's like, oh, this is Athens, Greece. I want to get something, you know, a souvenir. And I'm looking and people are, people are actively talking to me in Greek, obviously because we're in Greece and that's the language, but like people are really trying to hold conversations with me. They don't, they're not like looking at me and they're like, trying to speak English or, or like, you know, like when you're traveling and people know you're not from there and they're, they're like not really trying to talk to you. People were actively trying to talk to me and I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't speak Greek. I, I from the United States. I'm sorry. I don't speak Greek. And they're like, Oh, you, you look like you're from here. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> okay. And it, it, that's not really part of the story, but I was just like, that was kind of my awakening of my racial ambiguity which is a totally different vlog we're not going to get into that today but i just thought that was funny because they were like oh you look greek I, they were just shocked that i wasn't from there anyways and so as time goes by people are window shopping and shopping and the owners of the store because you could kind of sense there was something in the air like there's some commotion and there were like people fidgeting and looking real nervous and so at this point um, the owners of the store that I was in currently at that time, I remember it was like a little glass trinket store of like different like Athens memorabilia. And they they were like nicely, very kindly. Uh, they were telling us group. And we had these lanyards too, by the way. We had like these little lanyards. I was very obvious we were tourists. So they, you know, told us like we're close in, in Greek basically, but from what I could decipher, from what I could get within the context. We're about to close. Um, you know, if you, if you have found something, please come purchase it. If you haven't found anything, basically you're kindly dismissed, right? And so we're like, okay. Um, and we, it was about that time to, you know, get back to the, to the rendezvous point anyways. And as soon as we leave the shop, like a few inches from the threshold, because remember this is like a garage door, a few inches from the threshold, the, the thing just slams, the garage door just slams and you hear the big industrial lock right and this is it was like a scary movie literally and remember this is a big road of markets so there's markets everywhere and they all have this garage set up literally as soon as the door behind me closed all the doors like in a scary movie closed in sequence all the garage are like doom, 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 doom. and i was like ah, i don't know about this one right so i'm looking and it's like a ghost town in this alley. Like there's no one in this alley. Everyone locked themselves in. Cause if it's a garage door situation, you're gonna lock from the outside, right? But no, everyone locked themselves in their market. And I was just like, okay. So I go back into the direction of the town square where the big fountain is. And suddenly it's full of people. People that were not there before, right? And the best way I can describe it is for anyone who's ever been to a music festival. I've only been to a few. The one that comes to mind for me is Astro World 2. Not Astro World 1, but Astro World 2. When it's that last leg of Astro World where Travis Scott is about to perform. And everyone, if you if you went, you know everyone was like tight, right? It looked just like that. But I was in the back of the crowd because I had just walked up on this crowd. So it was tight, right? And rewind a little bit. 
when we get to Athens, we see people who are, let me check the temperature of my phone. Okay, we're good. When we get to Athens, we see people um, who have bandanas on, who have like big jugs of water or milk or like some sort of powdery water. Um, and they have powder on their faces. And I don't know if that powder was from the powdery water or if that was tear gas residue, like if they've been like stuck in the fog. I'm not really sure where that powder was coming from. I, I, I don't I don't think it was war paint or anything, right? But there was a lot of powder on these people's faces. Um, and I, and we knew going in that there were demonstrations and protests. We knew that. So that wasn't a shocker. And then the police were all like militaried up, like armor, Kevlar, like they were. And I was just like, okay, this is just how police dress here, right? Because you know, in the United States, it's a very regular, regular suit, like short sleeve suit and some khakis or slacks, right? And if you go to Paris, if you've ever been to Paris, I don't know if they're MPs or if they don't really have a police and it's the military. I should have Googled it before I said something. But in Paris, they have like fully camouflaged uh, military patrol with like MP5s, right? So I just thought, oh, okay, in Europe, it's a more militarized police. I didn't think anything of it, right? And so fast forwarding back to the to the crowd, the crowd is full of all these people in basically protest gear. Now, before the George Floyd protests, the Black Lives Matter protests, and before the Hong Kong protests, it wasn't wild. It wasn't widely available the information of what you should wear to a protest. Looking back, they were dressed just like how on Instagram and Twitter you would see the infographic infographics of how people should dress if you're going to a protest. That's how they were dressed: bandanas, gas masks. Um, jugs of water, jugs of milk. Of course, now we know you're not supposed to use milk, but back then they were still using milk. Uh, milk. Uh, some people were wearing like uh, motocross armor. Like it was like a whole thing, right? And I'll never forget it. I remember looking at the big fountain, and there was a guy who who climbed up to the top, and he was kind of like hanging. But he climbed up to the top and he was waving a flag. I don't think it was the flag of Greece. I don't know what flag it was. But he was waving a flag and he was giving what I imagine was a very inspirational, profound speech. Right? And everyone was just looking at him. And some people were looking around, talking, doing their own thing or shouting. You know, it wasn't a call and response kind of thing. So it wasn't like he said something and then they replied back. It wasn't that. He was giving some sort of speech or saying something. And other people were just kind of listening. As he was talking, behind me, I hear three very loud pops and then three very loud, subsequently, very loud hisses. So, pop, pop, pop. And I, I, I don't know. I, I've never bit heard that sound before, but in the context, I knew what that was. And so I turn around and it's nothing but this white fog. And then I see these armored police, like, like a line, like a line of armored police, like slowly coming towards what looks like coming towards me. Cause I'm in the back of the crowd, but they're coming obviously towards the protest. It's so I'm like, Oh, I need to get out of here. Like ASAP. And so it's, so I gather our group and again, we're wearing the lanyard, so it's easy to identify. So let me check the temperature of my phone. Okay. So we're wearing the lanyard. We're really easy to identify. So I'm like looking for the lanyards. My eyes are like focused on finding lanyards and I, I didn't like grab anyone, but I'm just kind of like, hey, like, Hey, we need to, we need to get out of here. We need to dip. Um, this is when people were still saying dip. I was like, yo, we need to dip. We need to get out of here. <laughs> and, uh, so we, we find our little rendezvous point, which ironically enough, wasn't, um, far from the town square where the protest was happening. So we find our rendezvous point and not everyone's there. Like not everyone's there for, if I'm just being 110% office, not everyone that I remember meeting at the airport is there at the moment, but we're trying to do the count off. And you know, if you've ever done a chaperone thing, they do the count off where you have a number and that's your number for the whole summer and everyone's counting and you're supposed to remember your number and say it as fast as possible. So everyone knows we're here. People were freaking out. People were panicking. Some people were amazed and they're like, this is the coolest thing ever. Cause chaos already erupted. Like remember tear gas already popped off, literally popped off 
behind me just a few moments ago and now people are scrambling but the americans are in this corner trying to do a count off which i understand as a chaperone you're not you don't want to leave a teenager in a, a, a riot in a protest a demonstration in a foreign country but the americans are over here counting off <laughs> and so we don't finish like people aren't paying attention people can barely hear as it is and so the chaperones they didn't say this but basically they're just like f it and so we like start doing this kind of like not sprint but kind of like this fast walk jog situation <laughs> to get to get away from the protest and so we're, we're dipping in and out of these alleyways right we're not following the main road because it's chaos it's it's a wild commotion because because you see people running you see people getting in altercations with police and and by the way because this is 2021 and we saw the black lives matter protests people think they know what a riot's like people think they know and then if we look at the the black lives matter protests of like 2013 2014 so 2013 2014 um and then 2021 were like some really big black lives matter protests and of course politicians want to use it either for their gain or for you know they want to people people think they have an opinion people think they know what a riot's like they don't know they just know what the news tells them and the news is going to show them the worst part but they don't know what it's like to be in the middle of a protest let alone a middle of a protest in a foreign country so let me just tell you that it's kind of like what you see on the news but times five at least times five probably not times 10 but at least times five and so imagine me as a teenager walking through this protest this demonstration where people are like having full-on brawls with police there wasn't a guy on fire like there was on on the news article we read before we boarded the plane but it was pretty close like people were like it was not a massacre but as close as you can get to a massacre before people start passing away and so it, it was crazy and so you have this group of teenagers obviously americans or maybe not even americans but obviously not from there because we have like these touristy lanyards and we're just like trying to find our way back to our hotel and so we're dipping out of these alleyways and protesters are moving these huge dumpsters like it's like groups of like two to five protesters like pushing these dumpsters and rotating them um so they're blocking the alleyway and we have to be like no no no, no. like let us through like our chaperones like we have kids uh just let us through and they kind of like give us like a hurry up look and then as we go through the dumpster they like block the dumpster to get the to keep the i guess the police from from chasing them or from they're trying to like i guess like uh what's that uh strategy in battle where you anyways they're trying to trying to con contain they're trying to contain it in one in one place and so you're, we're going again going through all these alleyways people are trying to block with the dumpster i see altercations i see running i see chaos i see fogs of tear gas uh all this all this different stuff i see just you know riot stuff the stuff you hear about on the news i saw it in real life <laughs> And I and this is I think in 2011 I can't remember what phone I have definitely wasn't an iPhone but I'm trying to take footage and I'm running at the same time or doing like a fast walk fast jog and I'm trying to take footage I wish I had that footage now because I would embed it into this video but I don't have the voted the footage there wasn't an iCloud back then so I don't have that footage but and I'm over here trying to be like a journalist take taking footage and everything funny thing about that though because I remember taking footage of this. So <laughs> after we get out of the alleyways and we're kind of like away from the commotion, for some reason, there was like different types of groups of people. And this is what I mean. There were obviously armored police. There were demonstrators, protesters. And then there were, I don't want to say tourists, but just people who weren't necessarily like involved. And then there were people who not only were not involved, but also actively didn't have a care in the world. Like they actually, so in like, 
in cities, I mean, we have these here too, but if you've ever been to Europe, you know, like, there's large strips of restaurants, and they're all, like, kind of duplex together, so they're all connected, and they all kind of share one long patio with maybe some dividers, so there are just people chilling, eating, and drinking wine, or water, or tea, or whatever, whatever people drink, um, just chilling and eating, in fact, they were just kind of like, hi, you know, welcome, hi, oh, hello. And I was like, uh, I was just thinking, I didn't say this, I was just thinking like, there's like a whole, there's like a whole riot happening just a block away, and you're over here eating. And the funny thing is, you can see like little sprinkles of protesters like running back and forth past us trying to get to different areas. And so it's not like they didn't know something was going on, but again, I guess like you have to still go through your daily life. I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, and so they were just eating and chilling. And I guess if you're paying for it or if you are having a nice time, you're not just going to get up. At, I, I don't know. Let me not speculate. I don't know. And so we get past those individuals and eventually we make it uh, kind of like out of the commotion. And we're getting closer to our hotel because our hotel was kind of like in this random spot of Athens. It was a nice hotel, but it was just like in this random spot, like away from the commotion. And so after we finally get away from the commotion... We're kind of walking, everyone's kind of tired because the heart rate's up and everyone's just kind of like debriefing and casually talking. Some people are like, oh wow, how cool was that? Or some people are like, oh my God, I thought I was gonna die. Or some people are like, oh wow, I mean, we were really a part of history, blah, 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 blah. So just having a casual debrief. And I'll never forget this, I'll never forget this. As we were not very long away from our hotel, there was this guy who was clearly a protester. Like he had the bandanas, he had he had everything. And he's surrounded by cats and he's urinating on the wall. Like on like and it was an alleyway, it was a road, it was an empty road, and he's like he's like surrounded by these cats <laughs> urinating on the wall. And he looks and he sees us and he zips up his pants, because obviously he's not trying to expose himself. He zips up his pants and he's like, Welcome to Greece, Americans! <laughs> and then he just sprints off just sprints off and then that was it we made it to our hotel and we watched the news to see if we were on the news that night we weren't on the news but yeah it was pretty crazy so we went from landing to the airport getting caught in a riot to seeing some guy surrounded by cats pissing on a wall welcome to Greece Americans and sprinting off all right y'all that's it for today that's story number who knows what vlog number who knows what my name's eric washington thank you for joining me i hope you enjoyed see you later